found this old number. John Langdon, would you come up and lead us, if you please? The Lord, I feel like we're right where we left off. Hallelujah. That's a wonderful way to feel. And now Robert Allen told me today, he thought this was one of the most, the most wonderful service he'd ever been in in Parker City. How many years have been since you came? Ten years. The 12 this December, she prayed since 68 to come. And he said, this is the most wonderful service this morning he'd ever been in in Parker City. And I agreed with him. Thank you. This is one of the old hymns. Would you please stand and follow John? standing. Mary Louise, would you tell your husband to lead us in prayer? <clears throat> we'll get the, uh, get this back there. Just lead us in prayer. He's one of my dear brothers, and uh, we've been together now since 1964. He's been helping us marvelously, preciously, tenderly, faithfully for these 34 years coming up this month. So we want to give God the praise for the wonderful fellowship we've had together Thank you, Jesus. and how the Lord's used him in all the years he was with me. 
I know he, in uh, Frankfurt, Germany, we had to stay in the airport 12 hours going and 12 hours coming. He was with me all the time. Hardly would go get a drink of water or food. Never asked me one question about anything. Now, if you can be with somebody, lots of times, wonderful people that kind of like to know about this or something. By God's grace, he never asked me one question in these 30-some years. And that's a lot to praise Jesus yes. for, because we mortals have a lot of questions. Yes. <laughs> yes. And I want to praise the Lord for how he's helped us. Jesus. So I, I want to thank Jesus for he and Mary Louise. And they've been with us in many states. We were in Clymer, New York in 1967. The two of them came to help us. And we had a little cabin. It was in July. And uh, the pastor asked me to come and revive. You don't mind me sharing this before, you, no. before he prays. Uh, the pastor wanted me to come, and the Lord told me to come in July. And all his preachers said, no. All his preachers said, no, we can't do that. Well, he said, God told his servant to come in July. Well, that's a hot time, and that's the time we make hay. They were dairymen. They had... Uh, every farmer had lots of cows. And they said, that's our haymaking time, and we can't have revival then. That's what they told him. He said, but this servant, God told him to come at this time. They didn't want it, but he said, uh, he's coming. So we went when the Lord told me, Hallelujah. and they came up with us to Carmen, New York. We had such a wonderful time together the four of us, which we'd had many times by God's grace yeah, in many states, even Salina, Kansas, and oh, I can't remember all the places. And you know what? We started that meeting. Do you know what took place? It rained every day. Thank you, Jesus. Can you make hay in the rain? <laughs> Reverend, Reverend Towers, it used to be the Nazarene minister here, back uh, 30, 40 years ago. He said, have you held a revival in your hometown? I said, oh, no. He said, you should have. So he got all the pastors and said, I want you to lead a revival. Well, it was his doing because he wanted me to. I didn't have the witness, but God helped me. I don't know whether you remember that or not, but Martha Louise was saved during that meeting. She was 24 years old then, now she's 59. So you know how many years ago that was. And while I was preaching, you never knew what he was going to do. I might be preaching, he'd go back there and talk to somebody on the back seat. He was an old-fashioned preacher. He was one of my dear friends. He said, I want you to go to my home church in Canada and hold a revival. Thank you, Jesus. He said, you're about to close up. I said, oh, it's a dangerous thing to ask a servant of God to go someplace and not do it. He said, I want you to go. So he called up there. I told him, I said, the Lord wants us up there on August the 12th. Of course, I was a thousand miles north. So he called and they said, oh, no, 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 all of them. I said, no, we can't have revival. The 12th of August for years and years is the day that the combines and the, all the other uh, vehicles of uh, thrashing wheat. They said, we always thrash wheat on the 12th of August. That's our time, all of us, everywhere. And they told him we couldn't do it. When he told me that, oh, it hurt my heart. It hurt me right there. Yeah. Uh, what happened was uh, he came down to Muncie for a wedding and uh, down came some of the ones from North uh, Canada. And they said, we want to tell you something. The day of August the 12th, it rained all the time. God told him to be here. Wouldn't it be wonderful if we'd listen? Yes. It's like my uh, manager of the condominium. He wanted me to drive his car. He said, these people are pressing me to, to uh, get this car. Come right up on the front seat if you want to. That helps me. If everybody would fill the front seat first, it helped me yes. to have everybody in front. Praise the Lord. And we're, we're thankful that the Lord is mighty to deliver his children. Hallelujah. And I'm going to be still now. It's helping me. <laughs> Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. All right, my brother, 
Richard is going to lead us in prayer. Thank you. Our Father, how wonderful it is to see the brethren worship together in yes. unity. Yes, Jesus. I was glad when they said unto me, Let us go to the house of the Lord. Touch my heart. For it's there in the house of the Lord where we meet Jesus. Yes, Jesus. And where we learn from him. Yes. And uh, so help us tonight to uh, worship you in truth and in spirit. Yes. In my heart. And heed what you say to Amen. us. Thank oh you. Lord, Thank you, Jesus. we deceive ourselves when we hear and don't heed. True. So uh, help us to worship you tonight. Yes, Lord. And help the Brother Helm oh, we need to it. give us the word that we need. Yes, Jesus. For we're all weak and needy. Yes. And uh, we need the word. We do. Hid in our heart. Yes. So. Uh, would you uh, let us just relax yes. and listen to the Word yes, and enjoy it and help us next week yes, Lord. when we come up against situations yes. to remember the Word yes, Jesus. and to follow the Word help me to do that. for it's what will get us through. Lamp to our yes. feet and light to so our we're path. thankful for it tonight. Yes, in Lord. Jesus' name. Yes. Amen. Amen. Thank amen. you. You may be seated. Praise the Lord. Now when he said amen, the Lord said pray on. So there's somebody supposed to pray. And you can tell in your heart. Did you notice this daughter? She came immediately up when I made it. She didn't hesitate. Thank you, Jesus. Did you notice how much that is to praise God for? Right. Just think of that. I was in a meeting at Liberty out of Winchester back in the 50s. I think it was 52. And uh, I said, if I could get people that's on fire for God yes. and following Jesus, like the football, basketball fans, the front seats that fill up first. Yes. And here was Max Edwards. He had three children. His wife was a pianist. And he was back about five pews. He got up immediately came to the front pew and sit down with his children immediately. Max Edwards. Max Edwards. And he, uh, he was at the Peaceful Valley in a meeting in a few days, a few weeks. He was in South America in Brazil. Yes. Wasn't long, so he was a missionary in Brazil. Established churches, 12 of them, every, uh, every 12 weeks. One every 12 weeks. Yes. He was there for years. And he went... Uh, God helped marvelously. I thought how wonderful that was because see, he, now he'd been in the church for 25, 30 years. Yes. But when I made that statement, he came immediately. Here he is at Peaceful Valley. Here he is in Brazil. Yes. Here he is winning souls. I don't know how many hundreds of thousands of souls he won the next 30, 40 years in South America. I'd like to praise the Lord. I do, yeah. This is the same Max Edwards, but I deliver mail to a Max Edwards out in Winchester. Yeah. And his, he has four sons, and they're all missionaries. And they're and down he's, around he's the one. South America he's and the different one. areas he's down the there. One. Praise God. I didn't know that I got to speak to him the and other I'm day. Thrilled. Praise the Lord. Woo! Hallelujah. I didn't know it. Glory. Oh, that, that's yeah, well, he's virgin. the one. Hallelujah. He had never sat on the Thank front you, seat in, in all his life. Praise the Lord. And when I said, if I could get people on fire for God, they'd fill the front seats up first. Yes. Well, he came right up. He'd never been there in all of his life. And then he was a missionary in Brazil. Now his sons, you tell me? He said, this man yeah. Edwards said, all four well, of his sons. He's the one. There are, they were just little tots. Yes. Praise the Lord. Oh, my. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank I you, just Jesus. learned something. Isn't that marvelous? I didn't know it. Thank you, Jesus. But when she came up immediately, that took me back to that meeting. Yes. See, I just mentioned she came right up. Praise the Lord. Oh, thank, you, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Glory, Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. We praise you, Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Praise the Lord. We want to thank you. Jesus. Well, you know, when the Lord told me to go up there, the candidate for the meeting, and my heart hurt when he told me we couldn't go. It started raining on the 12th of August and rained every day I was supposed to be there. What would have happened if they let me go? Would someone been helped? 
Yes. Someone be encouraged? It's going through me. Yes. I don't know how many. But because they thought they'd gone by earthly plans and earthly ideas, most all we mortals do that. But Christ looked for a people that would just do his will, not plan anything. Let him lead us. We can't follow Jesus and make any plans. When we make plans in the flesh, we just ceased following him. Yes. How many amens do I need? <laughs> Praise the Lord. It's wonderful. Just think, his sons are missionaries, honey, and we didn't know that. Praise the Lord. Here I'm preaching in the, right in the midst of everything. Uh, he comes right up when I mention it. You remember it, don't you, honey? Uh, you and I were a lot younger then. Yes, that was many years ago in the 50s. And here we are at 98. A few months we'll be in 99, the Lord giving strength and deliverance and healing. It's a marvelous uh, gift of the Lord to let him guide us and direct us. Yes. Because he wants to tell us when to go, what to do, how to do it. We need to pray for wisdom on what to say and what not to say. And you see a man of God, you know, he might rebuke somebody and the people get all upset with him. Right. Because Jesus rebuked Peter. Yes. Didn't he? Yes, he did. He didn't know he was going to, but he did. Right. And so we're grateful that the Lord is mighty to save and how I need him every moment, every breath, Me too. every part of the way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Praise the Lord. We're grateful Glory. that he is able to deliver and do exceeding abundantly above all we can ask or think according to the power yes. that worketh in us. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise him. We glorify Thank him. You, we honor him Glory. Hallelujah. for all the wonderful things that Thank he does you, and leads us and guides Amen. us. We want to praise him. I said to Richard and Mary when we were in Clymer, New York, and to my wife, I, I said one week in advance, I said, we are to leave next Monday morning at 4 a.m. Right on the dot. You remember that? Yes, sir. And we had a great time all that time, you know, that week. And it rained every day and they couldn't make hay. So we tried to make some. <laughs> How are you getting along in your hay making? And spiritually speaking. Do you bail it? Do you roll it or do you mow it? Spiritually speaking, praise the Lord. So next Monday morning, here we'd had these wonderful meetings out there in Clymer, New York, where I'd never been. None of us had in that area. And God just worked and helped us in the meetings. Thank you, Jesus. I was so thankful. Because if he doesn't help me, I can't preach. I can't pray or anything. Just all words, unless he leaves it. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Want to give you the praise and the glory and the honor. Thank you. So Richard had the cabin all. It is 57 degrees out there of a night. Mm -hmm. Where he built a fire in the fireplace in that little cabin. Usually, you know, in July, you can have 80 degree weather, can't you? Right. Or more. Yes. 57 degrees. Build a fire in the fireplace, cleaned it all out good, had everything all fixed up so we could leave when the Lord told me to the moment. We had everything in the car and we'd been working at it for I don't know how long, one or two hours to get ready. Had, it, had that cabin, whenever you leave anything, leave it better than you found it. When you go into a restroom, leave it better than you found it. I didn't know it, but Daniel Light saw me cleaning up restrooms in Spain. I didn't know he was watching me, but he, he was watching me clean up things. Do you leave things better when you borrow them than when you receive them? If they give you a rake, do you leave a dollar bill all wound up around it with a, a rubber band to hold it to speak thank you? Do you do that? When you borrow things, do you take them home? I've failed several times along that line. 
we were in such a situation. We could hear the storm coming, couldn't we? And just as we got in the car at 4 a.m., the storm hit. And what happened? Did it rain hard? Really did. Mary, you remember how that the lightning was almost, almost constant. Yes. Uh, almost solid. Yes. Mm-hmm. And the Lord helped me to drive through that storm, and I'm so glad he didn't let any little limbs fall down on us. Thank you. Protected us. Yeah. See, it revealed that one week ahead. Hadn't been for Jesus, I wouldn't have known what to do, and I don't now, except by his mercies. But a little bit later, we'd had muddy lanes and muddy oh, walk out to the car. Oh, there was had, no sidewalk. Yeah, we'd had a mud, we'd, we'd just had a mess. That's what we'd had, and we didn't know that it was going to rain so hard. We'd had mud on everything, car and their home, where we'd cleaned it all up. Because God told me one week in advance, as I said a while ago, the condominium manager wanted me to drive this car. He said, they want me, they're pressing me to buy it. And I said, well, uh, Norman, I, I really don't know unless Jesus is merciful to me. He said, well, I want to know whether it's a good one or not. I said, I really don't know. And he asked me again. I said, well, I will, I'll go. It was an Oldsmobile. And it, I suppose it was eight or 10 years old or less. And as we pulled out of the condominium to turn right, I took off. I hadn't gone but about 100, 200, 300 feet. And I said, Norman, you don't want this car. Mm -hmm. It has a defective transmission. That people that owned that pressed him till he bought it. What many weeks till his precious wife Juanita was downtown Fort Lauderdale. And what happened? Transmission went out. He said, why didn't I listen? Right. How good a listener am I? Do I really listen? Do you really listen right here? Do you really listen right here? I failed a few times, perhaps. But he wants us to do what he says. I've already told you this, but we were going, the twins were 11 years old. That's uh, 49 years ago. And we were going down uh, Mulberry Street, and there was a photographer there. And he told me to go in and get all the five of us, all of our pictures taken. Yeah. Oh, you should have been there. My twins and uh, Joyce said, oh, Daddy, we're not dressed up for a picture. We don't look very good. Remember that, honey? I have that picture in my pocket if anybody wants to see it. I've carried it ever since. It's right here. No. What would you do if you're going down the street and he says, go in and get your picture taken? Would you have done it? That's by God's grace I did. I pressed in there. Of course, none of my family was thinking of a picture, and I wasn't either. You see, the thing was, I found out, that the photographer needed me in there. He was discouraged. He had some situations. We didn't go in to get a picture taken. We went in for him. Is that worth more than pictures and pictures? Thank you, Jesus. Just to do what he says to do. Yes. Teaching us, leading us, helping us to be loving all the peoples always as he loves us. Love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind, with all thy strength, and love thy neighbor as thyself. On these hang all the law and the prophets. One of the synoptics says, the other one says, there are no other greater commandments than these. If we don't get those two, are we really able to walk with him? Are we able to hear his voice? He said, my sheep hear my voice. My sheep know my voice. Have you ever read that? 
Do you think if we don't do his will, we're going to hear his voice? Now, it's worth a whole yes. evening service. Yes. Really? Right there, yes. Yes, worth a whole evening service. And I, I cry out for mercy because I'm the neediest. I said, when I was 25 years of age at the White Water Methodist Church, I believe I need prayer more than about anybody on earth. Here we are in our 83rd year, and here I was saying that at 25. I'm sure most of you feel that way too. It's urgent that we humble ourselves and love all the peoples. Because you see, if we don't love everybody, everyone, whether God doesn't want what they said about us or to us, if we don't love them as we love our friends, could God lead us? Would he? Would he? Would he lead us? And we'd be so far out of tune, we wouldn't know what was going on unless by God's grace he cleansed me of that. So I could hear. I was at Ned Harness' store right across from the old bank that they closed up and the drugstore corner in Lou Morgan's place. I was in there. I was getting some groceries and all at once Jesus told me to go down on Fulton Street uh, just across from where Howard Moulton used to live, he and Charles and all that family. And the gentleman that lived there was kind of a local preacher, I think, in the Church of Nazarene. The Lord told me to go down there right in in that grocery store. I left everything. I went right down, went in, and I said, Jesus tells me to pray. I fell in, in the front doorway and began to pray and bombard him. If I could only pray like that again. Oh, if I could only pray like that again. And uh, after I'd prayed about five or ten minutes, Jesus came down within just nine or ten, ten feet of me in a white robe. So I left. He had a growth in his body that big around in the bowel. They had the x-rays. He was to go to balls and have that removed. And uh, he, he was in need. So they went uh, down for the surgery. X-rayed him. And a little bit, there were seven doctors, seven medical doctors came in around his bed and said, who is the surgeon that took this out? There's not a scar on your stomach. And he said, Jesus took it out of me. Yeah. The Lord's to be praised yes. for everything. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. One time I came in from Indianapolis, my wife said, uh, Vera and Kenneth is calling you. That's Lori's father and mother. She was around 13, I think, at the time, 12 or 13. And her father had... He was a main tennis man at the factory. He had rinsed his back and he couldn't get down to get up. Right? And Vera and you all had to work with him because he was in such pain that tears just ran down his cheeks. And I was a little tired. I'd been a long way and came in. But when my wife told me that, I went out there. They lived the first house north of Parker at that time, or the DeGrews. Frank C. DeGrew used to be one of our tellers in the Parker Bank. Can you older ones remember that? Can you remember Frank C. DeGrew? How many can remember Frank C. DeGrew? One, two. He helped Charles Holiday. And I went out to their home. The Lord said, pray when I got out of the car, and I went in. And I said, Jesus, please help me to know how to pray. I, I can't pray because he's in great pain. And so we just started, by his grace, could I pray again? So I just prayed a little bit and cried up to Jesus. And what did Jesus do, Lori? Stand up and tell the dear one, to Jesus' glory, be sure to give God all the praise and all the glory. Uh, after Reverend Helm prayed, Daddy was able to get up and leap across the room. He just jumped. He, danced in he could not get up or down. I had never seen my father up to that point in that much pain. I'd never seen him like that before. And um, he, he was able to just kind of run, run a circle around the room. It was great. God healed him on the spot. I can still see him. I can still see him. When Jesus healed him, he went like this. 
But God, we want to give God all the glory and all the praise for every answer to prayer. Hallelujah. And I, I need help in praying so much. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for all he does for us. Uh, Sarah, would you come and sing number three on your list, please? Praise the Lord. Yes, Betty. Praise God. My heart is overflowing. <laughs> oh, God, you're so great. <laughs> Thank you, Father. Glory. Oh, praise God. <laughs> I didn't expect that. <laughs> Oh, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> I'm thankful that you were faithful to a young man named Jody Bishop oh, on my. December the, the 8th, 8th of December 1964. Yes. Because he was so far away, but when he saw you, when he t was just with you a little while. Three hours I, speak, I spoke with him. He knew that you were a man of God and that you lived Jesus, oh, what you so prayed, knew it was genuine, sincere, and I'm thankful, thankful for what God has, has done for us through these years, for every answer to prayer, for every yes, miracle yes, that Jesus, he has yes. performed in our lives. I want to praise God. Down. Yes, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> when I found him, I didn't know. You see, his father and mother were the, some of the uh, great leaders of the Western Methodist movement, kept a lot of evangelists, and Joe, Joseph had been with them many, many times in the home around the table. And uh, he had decided, he was so hurt, I didn't know this till later, but he was so disappointed and hurt that he wasn't going to come to that revival. And when he did, uh, the Lord, of course, helped us wonderfully. God changed his life, saved him. He found Jesus. He'd gone to the altar many times but never was able to get the victory. And uh, so that night he took me after I talked to him for three hours under the anointing most of the time. We went up to post office one and I mailed the three letters I had written to ministers. Got back to the uh, parsonage and I couldn't get out. And that was your brother's jewels, it was your brother's place. He and his wife, there was a pastor there it was through your brother that I found them. That's a lot to praise God for. Hallelujah. Yes. And uh, it, it was, a, I said, I can't get out. He said, can you go home with me? And I said, yes. We just met that day. Thank you, Jesus. We went home and of course Betty was to get up early and get ready to teach the next day. And she was probably saying, why would Joseph bring a stranger here at this time of night? Is that right? I didn't know that you knew this. I took him in the kitchen. I said, why did you do this? You <laughs> he didn't have anything to do with it. I couldn't get out of the car. He couldn't do anything I got. So I said, I'll go home with you. I was there until 3.30 the next morning. I tried to leave at one. She came down and the Lord healed her. The Lord healed her of six different things that she'd had for eight years. True. And she'd been waiting for us because when they had meetings out uh, there, either in the Western Methodist, uh, the Western College in Marion or Cleveland Bible College, when she went to the altar, they came down and tried to get her saved. Well, she had been saved. She was carrying burdens for the missionaries, for storms and all kinds of the lost. And they'd try to get her saved. Uh, frustrated her. She didn't know what to do. She was carrying, she was a burden bearer. Mm -hmm. And they didn't realize it. Praise God. So God did a great marriage, changed, yes. changed Joseph's life, Hallelujah. changed him, made him a new creature. Hallelujah. He was a missionary to millionaires in Knoxville area. He was a, he was a missionary. And we want to praise Jesus for how God used Amen. him to witness for Jesus in many garages and filling stations and restaurants. Praise the Lord. One multimillionaire family there um, has sent a total of $12,000 since he first became ill. And when we lived in Knoxville, they gave him the key to his, their house. So whenever you're on this side of town, you're, our house is yours. Yes. If you need to rest or anything, that they loved him that much. Oh, yes, yes. So, uh, you know, he, he, he had the, many... They had a marvelous ministry. They would tell other millionaires and other people 
and uh, he was wanted uh, various parts of Knoxville. But to see each time he could witness to them. Yes. Oh, if it had been in a book, it had been so priceless for you to read. Wow, Jesus is to be well, praised. Well, back in the 80s, it was like 85, I think, when you called one time. You said if he wrote a book right now, there would be 26 chapters. It was 86, I think, something like that's a long time ago. Thank you for so. telling me I'd forgotten it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Sarah, for waiting and Mother. Thing I need to ask for, for prayer for the mother of a friend of mine that lives down in Jasper. Yes. Um, she has cancer, and she's had cancer twice. Well, this is the second time, but yes. they've given up on her. She, they're letting her die, and my my friend is so sweet. She, they all love Jesus, and they won't even tell you how her mom is. We had to learn from somebody else because they're just so That's concerned so about everybody else. That's so wonderful. But, it touches my heart. I don't know. It was just on my heart to ask. Jesus, go right in now. Blessed Savior, go right in where she is. Thank you for going in, Jesus, and laying your hand upon this. Let the cancer now die and be gone, be taken for your glory and praise and honor to the blood of Jesus and by the stripes of Christ. We thank you for this privilege and this burden on this thy precious handmaid. In Jesus' name, all glory be to the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for requesting it. God would allow us to try to pray. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm. I need help. <laughs>
sweet that was oh it was so precious got into my heart help me it was precious hallelujah thank you Sarah praise the Lord Glenda would you come over and sit with her if you please honey thank you the Lord revealed to me some time ago I was praying for Sarah to have a praying friend that she could uh, pray with and they would be close uh, just feel free to go right in beside her there, Glenda. And the Lord showed me that these two could pray together, and they had so much in common. So I'm so thankful for these two daughters. Dealing with me when you're saying yes, uh, God revealed it to me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Yeah, you can love each other now. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Because, see, um, Sarah is such a unusual handmaid, has a marvelous gift. Uh, see, I didn't know she could play the piano until right. today. And I was talking to this son, and I said, does she, does she sing and play? And he said, yes. I said, well, boy, tonight we're going to have one. We had a, Thank you, it's Jesus. exciting, isn't it? Hallelujah. Oh, the sweetness, the sweetness, the beauty, the truth, the words, and the melody that she could play like this. Hallelujah. Yes, honey. Amen. See, if all the people would be like the little children, there'd be revival in Parker City. Yes. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Just like today, Hallelujah. when God got on this daughter, if everybody had obeyed God, this place had been filled with the glory of God. Right. If everyone would. How many people do you think obeyed God here today on their own? What's there two or one or two or three? Oh, my ministry. When I went in the ministry 61 years ago, of course, I'd preached uh, now my 60th, 60 year. I said, if we could only find a people that would really obey him, it'd be a great awakening. But well, where can you find them? In Ezekiel 22, 30, he said, And I sought for a man among them that would stand in the hedge and make up the gap before me for the land that it should not destroy it, but I found none. You mean three to five million of God's people were there and there wasn't one? It says that, John, that's right. And if it was like that then, has it, ever, has it changed any in the last two or three thousand years? He just wants us to obey. Yes. He wants us to hear. And this precious daughter today was crying out that very thing. Right. That we would obey the Lord, yes. that we love and let him lead us. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Praise Hallelujah. God from whom all blessings flow. Uh, you see, if we're all prayed up and led, yes. I'll tell you, you would be, you'd be on your feet a part of the time until you have to say, God, give me grace to sit down. Right. See, if everybody obeyed God, yes. the minister wouldn't have to preach. The layman would preach. The farmers, the teachers, the singers. Uh, the grocerman, they'd be doing the preaching. If people obey God, oh, I'd be one of the greatest revivals of all time. Uh, nearly if we just obey, just obey and do what he wants us to do. Right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Well, I have my wife here tonight. Maybe she can testify now. When she testified the other day on her own, different ones told me that it helped them. Yes. Amen. Yes, it sure did. Uh, women used to come up to her 50 years ago, 40 years ago, and say, how can you live with a man like this? <laughs> well, it's been a real pleasure to live with a man like that. <laughs> yes. Well, 
I'm just thankful to be in the house of the Lord because I don't get here, I'm not here anymore very often. Mm. Through the years, I, I have been a lot, but uh, here lately I haven't been. And as Lauren was saying, <clears throat> many years we'd go to churches and uh, I'd be the one sitting on the front seat because I played the piano. And uh, I about needed binoculars to see the rest of the people who are in the back part of the church. <laughs> but uh, the Lord's been merciful to us and given us wonderful help, and He still is. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and we're trusting and believing the Lord. I pray for all the, now that I can't read like I always read all these years, uh, why well, I'm praying more, and that's good. That's probably better. And uh, I pray for all the fellowships all over the United States every day. I go down the whole list and pray for them. And when I get here, and I, I, in my mind's eye, I see this beautiful big structure sitting out here. And uh, I just endeavor to ask the Lord to to make a soul-saving station out of it some way. <laughs> He'd have to do it. He'd absolutely have to do it sitting oh, yeah. way out here, uh, you know, with uh, nothing around. Right. But we know that, but that he could do that. Yes, he's he could do it. We couldn't in our own oh, selves. True, true. But with uh, his power and, and the prayers of the people, I know I heard a minister the other night <clears throat> on TV saying, that uh, in praying, people would have to get through their human praying for what things. They have, they'd have to pray, pray through that to be able to get to a spiritual place so they could pray what God wanted prayed. I thought that was, oh, yeah. I thought that was very good because oh. he said sometimes that might take hours. Oh, yeah. I can remember in the past when my husband would he'd pray for three, four, five, I mean, many, many hours uh, of his life he prayed. <laughs> and uh, so we're, we're thankful. I'm thankful to be here, thankful for all the dear people. I think I try to remember uh, a lot of them when I'm praying. And uh, the, you that are uh, David and, and uh, Tyler and the different ones who are helping Jewel and... and uh, so that's the way I spend a lot of my time now, sort of lying in my bed, uh, praying or whatever like that. And then the Lord will allow me to get up and we'll go out some. So I'm thankful <clears throat> just yes. to be here, oh, yes. <laughs> to be living in the world right now. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yes. praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Amen. Thank you, honey. Hallelujah. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Everybody be obedient to the Holy Spirit. Let God have his way with us. He wants to all the time since Jesus ascended. But how many do you think has been obedient since he ascended? On their own, consistently, continuously, not spasmodically. In your acquaintance, do you know people that obey the Holy Spirit as God leads them and speaks to them? That's Christianity, isn't it? I am not able to express it for the, de for the dear ones who are helping us, who yes. help us. Oh, yes. Oh, our we are. children. If it wasn't for that, I don't know <laughs> where... I'd be. Yes. So I want to praise the Lord for these dear ones, our children, and then others who are so willing. Uh, this last week, a lady that lives many hundreds of miles away said to, on yes. the phone, oh, yes. now if you need me, yes. you just call and I'll be yes. there. <laughs> one of the finest persons in the world in the church. What? She's one of the great saints of God. Yes. So those kind of things are they're encouraging, you know, to us. 
yes. that we have the, the dear people of God who are Precious here, Jesus. there, and yon, and are, are willing to uh, be of help to us. And, oh, yes. and it's a We're great so thing that we can't praise the Lord enough for. That's true. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Thank you, Jesus. Oh, yes. Yes, Robert Allen. I just want to thank the Lord for you and Mother and that you're able to be here and so everything you meant to us all these many years and you've given so much of yourselves. I remember I was so thrilled with, with uh, Florence testifying. It was, I thought it was like a dream. Yes. It's like a dream that she's here and be able to testify. So thankful for that. And it brought me back to the time when I was visiting you in your home and I was in Richmond uh, State Mental Hospital yes. uh, for drug therapy and mental illness and whatever. Yes. And uh, I was getting ready to leave and Aunt Florence came down and she looked at me with such love and she says, we're praying for you. And I neared, I thought I was going to fall on the floor. I, I, just, I couldn't imagine anyone praying, praying for me. I just, it was just so fantastic that I just, and that was one of the things that led me to salvation. Yes. Yes. Was her telling me that. Yes. <laughs> so I, I'm in debt to both oh, of you. Praise the Lord. Thank you. He found Jesus with me in my room. Yes, Glenda. Thank you. I just wanted to praise praise the Lord. Um, you weren't aware of this, and I haven't shared it with anybody, but um, I, I praise God for your calling me on the phone at the office the other day, and that's when you shared about Sarah and her yes. precious family. Yes. And I didn't say anything, but it had just been a few days, I don't know how many days, and, and in my heart I had been praying, oh, for God to give me a prayer partner, for God to give me a friend, because I longed so much. And I, you know, sometimes you just feel like if you could pray with somebody, it would just change change everything. Yeah, if you could just you pray so about things. Um, because so many times in the past when I've been privileged to pray with somebody or have someone pray with me, it just helps me so much. Yeah, yeah. And, um, so I just praise God because then on the phone you shared about Sarah and, and the two of us getting together. Yeah. And so it was like God saying here and in an answer to prayer. So I just praise God for hallelujah, that. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God. the Lord. Thank thee, Jesus. Thank thee, Jesus. This is exciting. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, my, how wonderful. We want to praise Jesus for this. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because uh, these two daughters are like minded in Christ. Thank and. You, Jesus. You can pray together and share together. And, the, and you know, when two persons are met in his name, he is in the midst of them. Hallelujah. Where two or three are gathered together in my name, Hallelujah. there am I in the midst. Yes. So when these daughters pray together, talk together on the phone or they're in the car, they go to the restaurant or wherever, and see, and they talk about the kingdom of God, Jesus is there with them to help them yes. because they're pure, holy women of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Praise Jesus. the Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, Sarah. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, I got to fess up too. Um, <laughs> I've been praying for I don't know how long for a friend and to be quite honest, just around the time that all this happened, I was very lonely, and I hadn't even told mom, and you know, yes. I would tell Jesus at night, and I just didn't think that, you know, I've been thinking I'll have to wait till I grow up, because I don't, I don't think that, well, mom said she was lonely growing up, so I thought it might as, might be. Yes. Um, you know, down here, I inherited. Start, I started praying for you the other night, you know, and I prayed that you would get a friend that would pray with you. Sally uh. told me, and I was, I was excited because only Jesus would know. Yeah, only he knew. And I'm, I'm just thankful. Oh, I yo, don't know what to I, say. I could tell it. That's a lot. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Glory, glory. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. 
Thank you. Yes, thank you, Jesus. Amen. All right. Yes, Debbie. Well, I just want to praise and thank the Lord for answering a mother's prayer, too. Yes. I've watched her try so hard. Oh, yeah. have yeah. friends her whole life. Yes. And every time, I don't know if the enemy comes in on it, but every time they end up just walking away from her. They just don't. I don't know what it is, but I, they don't know I'm how precious talking up she to is. the enemy, fighting, yes, but yes. it's just broken my heart for her time after time, and and I kept telling her, you know, yes. sometimes you have to wait till you're an adult. It seems like she connects with adults better, but she feels like she's in their way. She feels like she's a little girl, and that she, they don't need to be bothered with her. Not that they make her feel that way. Surely. Nobody makes her feel that surely, way. Surely. But she just concerned that she yes. would be a a nuisance oh, and uh, such a so I'm just really thankful oh, for yes. the whole thing oh, it <laughs> is. yes you know when I started praying for her that night was that two weeks ago uh, and I was praying and all at once the Holy Ghost said pray for her to have a dear friend right, that's right. that would be in oneness with her, that's right. consecrated, holy unto God, right. pure and undefiled, yes. so that uh, I didn't know what was going on. The Holy Ghost just prayed right that's through right. me. Yes. And then I meditated, I said, where is she? Where is she, Jesus? And if it came to Glenda, oh, she was the oh, one. Hallelujah. So I called her. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And oh, how wonderful it is, because these two, see, Glenda's been lonesome. She wants, she wants to have people that she, she can tune in with in the Holy Spirit and, and just praise the Lord. Just right. praise That's the right. Lord. Just yes. let the Lord help Amen. and lead. And Hallelujah. However God wants to. And she's been lonely wanting someone all through the years. And she said her mother is one of the finest in this world. And her father was. And uh, she said this morning, it doesn't seem like he's gone. He's, he's just around. You know, the Holy Spirit has helped her. Yes. So you see these daughters, just pray for them because they can have wonderful times. You see, two persons. I found out that I was great at time with one person talking to them as if it's a hundred or a thousand. Right. Yes, I oh, get yes. as happy with one that I never saw before. I didn't know them at all. Right. And uh, that's the way it is. Uh, you don't have to have a big crowd. Just someone all for Jesus and someone that loves everybody. Oh, he comes by his Holy Spirit. That's right. And everyone's trying to find this fellowship. Yes. Fellowship in the Holy Spirit is what everyone's really needing right here. And they don't know it. Men will gather in restaurants and talk about all kinds of farms and ball games and all their possessions just to have fellowship. But to have fellowship in the Holy Ghost, in the Holy Spirit. And that's what I was so anxious for these two daughters. You know, so we want to thank Jesus. Amen. Oh, that, hallelujah. Praise thank God. You. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Well, we're thankful. Uh, John, do you have a song on your heart tonight? If you don't, that's okay. I just want to be sure because uh, sometimes he does. And uh, we'd be thankful also for the Murphys and the Garths and Catherine to sing. I kind of wanted Catherine to sing a solo tonight, but uh, she has Peter and they're out. She's going to take care of him. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Jesus. You thank you. That. Yes, Sandra. Thank you. Something you said earlier has my mind on obedience. Yes. I told the kids in school one day, I re we really need obedience. Yes. And one yes. of the students said, what's obedience? Isn't that interesting? How old were you? The, this was a sixth grader. Sixth grader, about 12 years old. Uh-huh. So that she particular student know what, what didn't know was? what obedience was, didn't okay. know that particular word. Yes, that's right. Isn't that interesting? It is. But. And many people that know what it is have never pressed to it. Right. They've heard right. it in the church lots of times, but they've never pressed into this life of, of obedience. I remember on one of the trips to Israel, Yes. I didn't have much money left. Hadn't brought much money in the first place, but didn't have much 
many dollars left. Yes. And so I felt impressed to give some money to a young man. I thought, well, if I do, Lord, I don't know if I'll have enough money to get home on mm-hmm. for whatever little things you need left, beverages yes. or something. I thought, oh, well, <laughs> if you're telling me this, then I just have to do it. Well, about the time this was going through my mind, um, Reverend, you said, has everyone been obedient? And so I stood up and said, no, and went over and gave the fellows some money. Yes. And then because of that, people started bringing him money. Hey. Yes. Hey. You know, one obedience leads to another. to another. And so anyway, the Lord got me home and <laughs> it was all taken care of. Well, the, I think it was the next day. Well, he didn't have much money, you see. Yes. And so the Lord provided. Yes. Well, with he took some of that money and bought a little necklace, a little silver necklace that had a little green stone in the in the middle. And so I call that my obedience necklace. <laughs> and I gave it to Alexandra. I said, one day you can have this. This be uh-huh. call this the, the obedience necklace. And I told her the story about how that happened. Yes. But in thinking about the obedience that you're referring to er- earlier, yes. I remember in Muskegon one time um, how a particular evening, one obedience was leading to another. And yes. a gentleman, I think you may have been there, but um, a black man that, that came there. My sister sang, got up and sang, hallelujah. Yes. And then somebody else sang, and then he got up and just sang, and he hadn't sung for years, had a desire to sing. And it was beautiful. Yes. While he was singing, my sister's back pain left. <laughs> and she's in constant pain. Constant pain. Has been for years. Had surgery when she, when she was 13 years old, almost died. But she was always in pain. Yes. And during that obedience, yes. and then for some time afterwards, yes. the pain was gone. And, yes. and it made impressed me oh, yes. that if we will obey quickly, yes. without yes. hesitation, yes. that... Um, then the next person is free to obey, and the next that's person it, is free it. to obey, and the next person that's is it. free to obey. And imagine the healings, the things we're waiting for, the yes. things we need. Already prepared Not for just it. us, but others need. It's oh. all there and available yes. as a spontaneous result, a spontaneous effect uh, right. of obedience. So it's a wonderful, wonderful thing. It is. Mm-hmm. It's what everybody's, and it would just solve the problems of many persons and lift their burdens. Yes, yes. So that's precious. Thank you for so sharing. I want to be obedient. I want to obedi- be obedient spontaneously. I know I fail, but that's my goal. I want to be yes. obedient yes, without obedient. hesitation. By thy grace, I want to be obedient. Right. Praise the Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for this. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you. Let us stand now, and Catherine's going to come and get ready to sing. Number two or three, t- number two on our list. John, would you come, Brother John, and uh, lead us in a chorus? I'll let us all stand, please. Hallelujah. He lives, he lives, Christ Jesus lives today. Thank you, Jesus. He lives, he lives.
Thank you. Praise the Lord. Thank, Thank you. you. You may be seated. Thank you very much. Appreciated that gift of the high voice along with the rest. Praise the Lord. We're fortunate. Praise you, Jesus. Well, in 
the Garths and the Murphys now sing a number that they have. We sang one this morning and uh, let's have that now if you please. Praise the Lord. This daughter has a burden for the church and for souls and so well, some people wonder what uh, happens to her but she uh, it comes out of her heart. She just wants to see souls saved and the church obey God. Yes. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise you, Jesus. That song comes from my daughter's heart. Yes. I know her. And her heart hungers for holiness, and I'm thrilled. Thank oh, you, yes. Jesus. Oh, yes, yes. I never heard it before. And she knew it by heart. She didn't hardly have to look at it. It was a marvelous... A great song. Oh, we want to thank Jesus for it. Thank you for these precious ones. Thank you, Jesus. Come, feel free to come on up. And we're grateful for the Lord to uh, take care of this burden for the church and uh, for uh, the church universal, the professed church uh, in the, the various parts of the world, in Africa or Asia. Her burden now is for a church in Asia. So just ask the Lord to intervene for that congregation, that they would be obedient to the Lord and, and submit, surrender. Praise the Lord. Yes, amen. Amen. I just wanted to praise God while they're getting ready. I, this kind of service and the ones that we've had recently with you here, it's feeding my soul. Yes. And it, it reminds me of when I was a little girl, my parents would take yes. me yes. miles and miles oh, yes. and we would go and sit and listen and be in Reverend Helms meetings. And then after everyone would go home, there'd be a f yes. few of us sitting in the pews and we'd have sharing and a second, a second service. And, um, and I've longed for that kind of uh, comfort, yes. you know, and it feels yes. like a blanket wrapped around me. Yes. And I just want to, I want to thank Jesus for that. And I'm yeah, thankful that, that you're, heart. that you're able Hallelujah. to be here with us and it's that God's privilege. been helping you. So and grateful. I'm just thankful for that. Thank you, Jesus. It's a lot to praise him for. Let's give him the glory for his yes. presence to help us. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. I've been homesick for this. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. This is your home where Jesus leads. Thank you, Jesus. Thank oh, you, so Jesus. Oh, so wonderful. So precious. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for this. Thank you, Father. Her heart has been so lo lonely and crying out for Jesus to lead and to help us. Yes, please, do go up there and just speak right out. Yes, just give it to her. It's fine. Thank you. I want to praise God for freedom. Oh, <laughs> I felt so bad for two years. I feel like this week he's beginning to set me free. And so I want to speak with my lips and proclaim in faith that I believe he's doing it. So 
Praise the Lord. So thankful for that. Praise the Hallelujah. Lord. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for that. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. All right. Thank you. We're so fortunate to have these dear ones that are so gifted and dedicated. We, we've tried to express it, but we want to say it again and again. How their gifts and talents. Uh, Brother Murphy has such a marvelous gift of uh, presentation and then such a marvelous uh, gift of God in conducting and directing. And of course, uh, Tyler has this too. And for these daughters to have this ability to sing with them. Well, my heart to mention to you, I believe. I don't know if you're aware, Debbie Murphy, you have a master's degree in music no, as well. A bachelor's degree in music also. Oh, well, that's music. wonderful. Very <laughs> I'm so glad you told me. I'm learning something. Do you play the piano or any instrument or just sing? I play the piano some, but not usually publicly. I see. <laughs> your, your son was telling us how wonderfully you play. <laughs> yeah, your son was telling him how wonderfully you play. So we'll, we want you to... I know you're very timid and backward, but see, you have gifts, you know, we don't know anything about. So we thank the Lord for each one of you. Thank you.
so much. That was wonderful. Thank you. Yes. That it's not just words, but it is true from one into the other that there's rest that he lights our way, that he is our Savior, yes, yes, I... our soon coming King. I'm grateful that he loves us all the same and he's no respecter of person. Of course. To me, Thank that's you. so godly, that's so mighty and so pure that he loves each of us, that he is no respecter of person. Really gets to me because it's so easy to have a bit of respect of person in oh, my yes. heart. Oh, yes. And I'm so grateful that he is our pattern, that we are to pattern after the sweet, sweet Savior, our Lord Jesus Christ. He is always there. He will never fail us. He said he would never leave nor forsake us. Yes. And I'm thankful that he forgives us and that he holds us when we don't know what to do. That he carries us and by his Holy Spirit, through the precious blood of the Lamb, we will see him face to face and it will be worth it all. Well, that's good, honey. Praise the Lord. Thank you. I had that song in my heart this morning. I wanted to hear something. You did? Here it was today of all the thousands of songs. Oh, oh that's pretty wonderful. <laughs> well, I know it and I never heard it before. Jesus. And he revealed to me, I want to thank him again. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. For this uh, privilege yes. of his guidance that's and right. this blessedness. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Uh, what song is on your heart that Jewel can accompany you? Is it like Sweet Little Jesus Boy or, or There is a Bomb in Gilead? Yes, yes, Jesus Loves Me. That's good. She can accompany you on that. Fine. Would you like to stand a moment and rest? And then I'll preach a little. And we'll try not hold you much longer. <laughs> 